This is Twit. The evolutionary demise of banking malware. While assembling today's podcast, I ran across some interesting commentary which described the various factors that have worked to reduce the prevalence, actually to near zero, of once dominant banking malware. I've edited it for our audience uh, because a lot of it was stuff that we really well know. But here's the gist of what happened as described. Researchers from the security firm Mandiant have reported this week that you are SNIF. I'll, well, I'll, I'll pronounce it you are sniff, which is also known as Gozi, which we've talked about, or Gozi slash IFSB. One of the oldest and last few remaining banking Trojan operations that were still active this year has completely ditched its banking fraud related features and now appears to operate as a basic backdoor Trojan, the type of bare bones malware typically used now in access as a service schemes that rent access to compromised devices. And of course they're renting them typically to ransomware perpetrators. In other words, you know, just creating and opening doors for others to use is what this once preeminent banking Trojan has become. According to Mandiant, the change took place this summer when UR Sniff developers started distributing a new UR Sniff, um, which its version was tracked under the code name LDR4. Mandiant cites several reasons for UR Sniff's new radical redesign. At least two leaks of its earlier code base had occurred. Multiple branches of its authentic code base had, had been slowly diverging and were making it harder to support their features across different botnets, oh boo hoo. But also, it was an ancient code base that had finally reached the end of the road when IE was formally removed from Windows. Mandiant said, quote, in June 2022, with Internet Explorer finally being fully removed from Microsoft Windows, the RM3 variant was officially seen as a dead malware from a technical point of view, as RM3 was reliant on IE for some of its crucial network communication. And there we see a the mixed blessing of IE being a left being allowed to stay around for so long because so many enterprises were utterly dependent upon it for their internal software, which would not run, run without it as we've discussed many times. So it's a surprise that you are sniff lasted as long as it did operating as a basically on a banking Trojan model alone. It had become obvious by the mid 2010s that the banking Trojans, that the, the banking malware scene was dying, at least on the desktop. Banks, finally growing tired of a decade of thefts from customer accounts, at last rolled out multi factor authentication and transaction verification systems. Though they were not foolproof, these systems did their job and made it significantly more difficult and time consuming for banking malware operators to steal money from individually compromised accounts. Back in 2016, Emotet and TrickBot had converted their code bases from banking Trojans to generic modular backdoors. And were th those two were some of the first to do so. And even though they kept their banking modules around, the Drydex and QBot malware also followed suit later. In all instances, the primary driving force behind this shift in malware economics was the rise of ransomware and enterprise network big game hunting as it became clear to ransomware operators that they could extort obscene amounts of money from companies and government networks, they started to look for ways into those networks. And the existing 
old time bot networks that had been converted were their way in. This led to the birth and rise of a market for so-called IABs, we've discussed initial access brokers, where smaller threat actors would exploit corporate networking and server gear, plant back doors, then sell access to these systems to ransomware games and their affiliates. Evil Corp was the first major botnet operator to realize they could use their existing banking Trojan to drop mans ransomware inside the thousands of corporate networks they had at their disposal through the Drydex botnet and even launched internal teams to write and deploy their own internal forms of ransomware. And recall how often I noted that it was never safe to assume that an infected router would only be used as a proxy to bounce traffic or as a DDoS agent to flood. Sooner or later, I said, the operators who had established a foothold on these routers were going to turn around and take a look inside the network that they had infected to see what might be a valuable there. Because the Drydex botnet operated on a closed model where its operator, where its operator prov was only providing limited access to their botnet to only a handful of very carefully vetted operators, the, the service-oriented Emotet and later TrickBot, which were open to anyone who wanted to sign up and who had been vetted, cornered the market in malware as a service working with ransomware games. And after law enforcement finally cracked down on Emotet and TrickBot, two others, Iced ID and QBot, stepped in as ready replacements after years of having slowly been growing their own botnets in the shadows of Emotet and TrickBot. The world of underground malware is not difficult to understand. It's simply about the minimum amount of work that can be performed to obtain the largest profit. Banking and carding is now difficult, thanks to banks. And ransomware is easy, thanks to all the bazillion reasons we talk about every week. There's no good reason to run a banking botnet these days, especially one as old and complicated as UR Sniff had become. It's far easier to create and manage a simple botnet, spam board corporate employees until they infect themselves and then sell access to ransomware or crypto mining gangs for a cut of the profits. What this does mean though, the takeaway for us is that the urgency to remove anything that might manage to crawl into your network has never been greater. Stats from the latest intrusion reports indicate that ransomware can be deployed within 30 to 60 minutes of an initial intrusion. This strongly suggests that the deployment of responsive intrusion detection should be front of mind for all security teams going forward. There's just, there's no substitute for watching. Hey, what's going on, everybody? I am Ant Pruitt, and I am the host of Hands-On Photography here on Twit TV. I know you got yourself a fancy smartphone, you got yourself a fancy camera, but your pictures are still lacking. Can't quite figure out what the heck shutter speed means? Watch my show. I got you covered. Want to know more about just the ISO and exposure triangle in general? Yeah, I got you covered. Or if you got all of that down, you want to get into lighting. You know, making things look better by changing the lights around you. I got you covered on that too. So check us out each and every Thursday here on the network. Go to twit.tv slash hop and subscribe today.